Braden Lord at Australian Farmers Direct had just commissioned a new milk processing plant to distribute amongst his customers and Coles and Woolworths began discounting milk to a dollar. The fascinating thing is that it has not affected his business. In fact, if anything, it's grown. It shows that price is not the only thing that determines which way a middle or upper income person will spend their money. In the case of Australian Farmers Direct, it's, this is all about giving a greater percentage of the food sale rewards to the farmer. And that attracts a lot of consumer support. And it's also about delivering first thing in the morning, like between one and seven o'clock. And that in itself is a logistics exercise that the internet will need to master because it's delivery of product that holds back internet retailing. Baden, your Farmers Direct business uh, takes on the supermarkets. How do you think the revenue pie is divided between supermarkets, farmers and, and middlemen? Yeah, well, look, you're right. We do take on the supermarkets and the aim there is to exclude the middlemen and have that direct relationship so that we can deliver to the home and the doorstep for an economical price. So, look, as far as the, the breakup of the pie, as much as we can ascertain is that the, the supermarkets probably, whatever they receive in, they, they add about 100% onto that. So, you know, out of the pie, if it's 100%, if it's they're probably looking at making a, an absolute minimum of markup of 50 to 60%. Well, why do you think they're cutting the price at this point of time when they've got this fantastic uh, profit machine? Yeah, look, the, the best I can ascertain around that is, is, is around gaining market share. And the more that you actually have people wandering through your front door and they may be buying a cheap product, but they're likely to buy a lot of other products as well. So I think it's a big grab for market share. And uh, you know, when you've got, got uh, two big guys out there in the marketplace who haven't really got a lot of competition, um, Really what they're looking to do is exclude the little guys and us probably in their little little sites. Um, and uh, so we've got to put up a, a, a good battle to make sure that we remain competitive. How is it affecting your business? Well, fortunately with our business, it ha it's had very little effect. And in fact, in the last three weeks with a lot of the, the, the public outcry around this, we've actually seen that uh, it's consolidated our customer base. Our customers are actually now even more supportive of what Aussie Farmers does in supporting the farmer and making sure that the farmer gets a fair go. But you've put a big investment in milk, haven't you? Which yep. is the very, one of the front line mm. in the mm. supermarket uh, yeah. price wars. About 10 days before the uh, milk wars started, <laughs> we turned on the taps at our milk plant. So it was a bit of a fun time. Uh, but look, the reality is that you know, our customers, we communicate really transparently with them. We talk about how we pay the farmers an extra few cents for a litre so that they actually get rewarded by supporting us. And then our customers in turn look at milk as one of a, a basket of goods that they have home delivered. So it's really as much as it's the same, a similar product, the reality is it's a very different service. We're about home delivery, great quality, all Australian product. And then in a supermarket, well, we all know what you take your chances on there. Yeah, it started as genuinely as supporting the Aussie farmer back in Melbourne about five and a half years ago and delivering to the eastern suburbs, outer eastern suburbs, literally bringing back the milkman. Literally, you know, going out to households, knocking on the door saying, would you like milk home delivered? And it started, you know, with 100 litres of milk out of Narry Warren, delivering milk and now we have over 200 franchisees, we have about 100,000 customers that receive regular weekly deliveries and uh, we're across Australia. What's the turnover? Roughly, oh, roughly about 130, 140 million dollars, yeah. growing very strongly. We've um, just in recently entered into Adelaide, um, we entered into Perth about 12, 15 months ago. We're expanding into some of the semi-regional areas of, of the major um, states like up into the central coast and Newcastle in New South Wales and Geelong in Victoria. How do you manage the delivery problem? <laughs> That's what's been holding back in yeah. retailing in the supermarkets. Yeah. It's held back Coles and Woolworths in that area. Yeah. How do you manage it? Yeah, well, first off, right on, on the ground with our delivery um, pyramids or, or structures that we actually work on is it's making sure that they're clustered. So we have to make sure that we're delivering into a really tight geographical area and then we work back from there. So once we've got the demand within an area, 
they, they gain their product from a, a central depot and, and in, say, Victoria, we've got a depot in, in the east and, and in the west and same up in New South Wales. So they go into a central depot, pick up their product and essentially what we do is negotiate with the farmers and the producers to pull a product into those central depots. So reducing the amount of hands that the product actually is transacts through is the main you know, reason for us making sure that it's very, very efficient getting to the end customer. But when do you deliver it? Oh, first thing in the morning, first thing in the morning. So uh, our, our delivery guys would start at any time from 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, deliver it before 7 a.m. in the morning, um, six mornings a week, and then we have an afternoon delivery which is f um, especially designed for the fruit and vegetables so that we can actually hand those over to the customer or even pop them on the kitchen bench. You must leave it outside the front door. Did you get it stolen? <laughs> no, no it's, it's a common question though, Robert. Right? Um, I think you know, it's early hours of the morning, it's on the front doorstep, you know, it, but it's, it raises a good point. It's about trust and, uh, and our, our milkmen, our actual operators of our, of our business are actually trustworthy enough that, that a family actually welcomes them onto the front doorstep to pop some you know, great quality Australian product into an esky on the front doorstep. There's no one else. I mean, you even keep Aussie Post at the front gate. Our guys get right up to the front door, but it's about trust and, and, and security of the service is essential. Why did you leave Baker's Delight and go <laughs> into this business? Well, um, I, I just spent about four years living in Canada with Baker's Delight, and Baker's Delight set up an international arm across there, and, uh, and I had a couple of kids across there. We wanted to have a third, so it was like, okay, we'd spent Two year, four years on a two year stint uh, across in Canada. So I said to Roger and Leslie, the founders, look, it's time for me to come back to Australia. And, uh, and really a lot of the work that I would have been doing in Australia would have been what I had already done. So it was time to spread my, spread my experience. And, and uh, you know, I was on the sunny side of 40 at that stage. So I thought, oh, you know, here's a good opportunity and, and I'll get out there. And I did a bit of consulting and to be honest, you know, the consultant realm for myself was about, you know, all care, no responsibility. And really I wanted to sink my teeth into something that was, you know, fresh. It probably had franchising to it and it was something that, that I could add my experience through Bakers and that was a good 20 odd years. I did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had the opportunity to buy in and have a senior role at influencing the growth of the business and it's it's been a great transition and really exciting. In fact, coming up on the 1st of April, um, it's my third birthday, so I was the April Fool three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you get labour to work? Yeah. Uh, uh, one, two, one. Yeah. It's such dreadful hours in the morning. Yeah, yeah, look, it's, it's, it, it's, it's dreadful hours in the morning when you're not used to doing it, but when, you know, the guys that actually do our deliveries first thing in the morning, if they're not a franchisee, they tend to be, you know, sort of students, unskilled labour, who really, that delivery is all about accuracy and timeliness. So being able to deliver, deliver on time in full. Most of those people, to be honest, um, are foreign students or they're foreign, um, you know, sort of new Australians. And they're the ones that are actually prepared to do that sort of grunt work that you're talking about. How do you market the product? Yeah, well, we market it in a few different ways. I mean, we, we just, we've recently had a, a small, um, uh, introduction into TV, television commercials and supporting a, um, a really good um, television cooking show. So we've, we had an experience there. But most of the time it's really about using social media, using our internet strength. How do you use social media? Oh, look, we're, we've, got a, we've got a tremendous guy that's employed that looks after all of our strategies to do with social media. So we, we're on Twitter and Facebook and blogging and involved in actually promoting the, the virtues of our service and the great qualities of our service. But at the same time, it's really just about matter that, you know, if someone jumps on an internet and they say, look, I want, want some great groceries home delivered, that we're up there on, on the radar quickly as they do the Google, like well. exactly, yeah. But it's really, you know, I, I think the best way that we actually gain customers is friends recommending to friends. And, and we also add a little incentive there. So when some of our customers actually recommend it to a new customer, they get a reward for that as well, yeah. And what sort of links are you for with farmers? Uh, very strong links. In fact, the, the longer that our business is in existence, the, the tighter those links actually become because we've, we've been able to really 
um, generate volumes where we can actually appeal to some very large and significant farmers, whether it be for the delivery of, of, of beef and lamb or whether it's fruit and vegetables. And yeah, you know, so we've got a great guy who's um, out in the Arrow Valley that does a lot of our gala apples, tremendous guy to the point where we can take franchisees or even customers out and he can show them through the orchards to actually describe how the whole production of apples actually takes place, which is really exciting. So when I buy apples, I know that more than likely they've come from the Arrow Valley. It, more than likely, yeah. Although in New South Wales, we'll probably pull them somewhere geographically closer, so probably from orange. So it's about shortening the food miles. What about meat? Yeah, meat, meat typically, like lamb at the moment, most of the lamb is coming from Victoria. Most of the beef is coming from either um, southern um, New South Wales or up into northern New South Wales, right. Queensland. Branding the beef and the lamb in that the same way as you do with the apples? Yeah, look, I guess it's about consistency of supply. So it's knowing who you're buying from to ensure that you've got a consistently high quality product that the customers are consuming. And if the customers are receiving a consistently high quality product, they're likely to stay with the service and also recommend it to friends and family. Thanks, Brayden. Oh, my pleasure, Robert. Thank you.